Hey, I'm Matthew Moskoviak from CNET, and we're going to take a look at the Sonos Play Bar. There have been rumors of a Sonos soundbar for a long time now, but it's finally here, although it's going to set you back $700. Now, on its own, the Play Bar is actually kind of plain looking, which is a good thing if you want it to blend in with your home theater rather than stand out. What is unique is how short it is. It's just 3.35 inches tall, which means it won't block your TV's remote sensor like a lot of other soundbars do. The Play Bar is also unique in that it can be positioned either flat on a tabletop or flat up against a wall if you have a wall-mounted setup. Sonos even includes two different remote sensors on the Play Bar, so it works well in both positions. You'll also notice that Sonos doesn't include a remote in the box, so you're going to need to teach it to respond to commands from your TV's remote or your cable box's remote, although the setup is pretty easy. Around back is the Sonos's minimalist connectivity. There's just an optical audio input, two Ethernet jacks, and a power port. Sonos knows that you have more than one home theater device, which is why they're expecting you to connect all your devices directly to your TV first, then use your TV's optical output to connect to the Play Bar. In a lot of ways, it's a cleaner solution, assuming that your TV has enough inputs. Now, unlike a lot of soundbars at this price range, the Play Bar does not come with a wireless subwoofer, although it will work with the Sonos Sub, which you can add wirelessly to the system. Even better, you can add two Play 3 speakers to the system as rear channels, creating a true wireless 5.1 home theater system. Although, altogether, that ends up being a pretty expensive system, but it is nice if you've already bought into the Sonos ecosystem. And of course, with the Play Bar, you get access to Sonos's best-in-class digital music software. And that means you can access all of your digital music, including your personal collection and nearly every important streaming music service through Sonos Controller app. And the big question with the Play Bar is, how does it sound? And, well, it's complicated. It's outstanding when it comes to virtual surround sound, so from just this single speaker, you really do get the impression that there's sounds coming from the sides of the room, even though you don't have speakers there. But on the other hand, without the subwoofer, there's not a lot of bass here, and that really shows up if you're watching action movies, or especially if you're listening to bass-heavy music. The other thing is that the Play Bar does a lot of sound processing to get that really big sound. And if you're an audio purist, you're really going to notice that movies and music don't sound like you expect them to. And ultimately, that's why it's hard for me to love the Play Bar. It's just not a speaker that I'd want to listen to every day. Now, that's not going to be the experience for everyone, and the Play Bar is a really nice solution if you've already got Sonos components and you want an easy way to get better sound in your living room. But there are other soundbars around for the same price that sound significantly better, like the Speakercraft CS3 and the Harman Kardon SB16. So if you don't already have a lot of Sonos components, you'll want to check out those first. I'm Matthew Moskoviak, and this is the Sonos Play Bar.